next time we'll talk about. Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. We are glad to see you all here today. And I'm here with Amy Berrickman. And this is a wonderful display of all the things she's going to talk about. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have a lot to cover, Jenny. We do. We do. Well, it's National Quilting Month, so we're going to talk it. about quilt blocks. We're going to talk about pr quilt projects. and That is awesome. And we have a great live audience here, which is really fun. It is fun. I do love live. Live is, Ooh, live is thank you for coming. And uh, with that, we take a bow and we're yes. done, right? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So tell me about the stuff you have here. Well, I mean, you got loads of stuff. I know. Well, I thought I'd start you, with my Vintage Notions book. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody a little bit about that. And then we'll move into talking about the log ca cabin quilt block and some history. So Vintage Notions mm -hmm. um, has a section on it in April that talks about quilting. So, um, and you can see it here, patchwork and applique, and this is the Department of Sewing. Um, so this, the Department of yes, Sewing, that's there's, so cool. This book is divided up month by month, and it has all sorts of inspiration for everything from like needlework to cooking recipes. So I have um, this book, and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful oh. to look at, it's beautiful to touch. It has so much information. You know, a lot of the little handwork stuff and that kind of stuff is lost oh. to this generation, but it's in here. Yes, I and call it like the history of handmade. Yes. And, and there's all the fabrics from my collection, whether they be hankies or feed sacks, those got scanned and put on the pages. Um, but in this patchwork and applique article, it just talks about how you know, back in the pioneer days, how important a woman's collection of her quilts were to her. And the log cabin being one of the super early ones. That, do you know that was the very first quilt I ever made? I actually watched a tutorial recently as I was doing my research, it uh -huh. popped up. Um, and I knew that. So yeah, the, the log cabin, you know, it actually goes back in history, even this morning, I was watching that it was mummies were wrapped in cloth that had a log cabin. Your mummy or my mummy? <laughs> <laughs> like real mummies? The, the real mummies. The oh my real gosh. mummies. And the other thing that was brought up, if you look down at a pyramid from the top, mm -hmm. it kind of has the look of oh, a log cabin. Oh, that's interesting. So, that's interesting. you know, one thing that we talk about with log cabins is the fact that a lot of them have a red center mm -hmm. and that was to signify the hearth or the home, the center of the home and or yellow. Mm -hmm. And I learned this in your video was uh, like light. through the window, right? Yeah, the light of the home. It's um, either the heart of the home or the light of the home. Right, right. So what but I- that being said, you can put any color in there you want. <laughs> you can. You and can. I've got some, you can even put a print in there. Sure. Or, you know, I, one photo I took had a, this was at an, at an antique shop, but it had a rose that was at every center oh, printed. Oh, that's very cool. Um, but when it comes to naming quilt blocks, I- Which in, is the worst. It's so hard. Well, there are so many different names, right, for different, and it's which one. And there's lots of names for the same block. Right. And, you know, I mean, it's just when somebody says, when you know, when I finish designing a quilt, and I know you know this too, it's like, then they want you to put a name on the pattern. And you're just like, oh, well, some, summer day. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we call it? But that's not searchable. Nobody's going to search that. Right. Kind of but, well, you do such a good job taking mm. from, I try. you know. I try. I try vintage and making it modern. And um, and that's what I love to do too. So yes. that's why I think we get along so well. <laughs> Amy and I have a lot of things in common. You know, we're both kind of thrifters. We're both, you know, we love the old stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I'll get something and she'll be like, oh, where did you get that? <laughs> At a garage sale, you know. Well, we do, we do have a lot of things that we love yes. that are similar. And later in the show, I have a, that reminds me of a special gift for you. Ooh. That last time I visited, you told me how much oh, you liked. I, oh, so, I'm so, so thrilled so about I this. Will, yeah. we'll, look, we'll at look at that. But what I want to 
mention is this was a ladies art company catalog. This was the first catalog that gave blocks names. Oh. And I have um, two copies of this, one from 1922 and one from 1928. And what you're seeing here is the two, a picture of the before and after. In 1922, the the patterns were only numbered, and in 1928, oh, they got names. I and no so, idea. Brian, I had a slide that I think Brian's going to put up for us that oh, shows cool. the two different I get, catalogs. Okay. And then, when I got to read, so preparing for today, mm -hmm. I was looking for log cabin blocks in this catalog, and there was one, they called it the log patch. They didn't call it the oh, log cabin. And then, I actually like the log patch. Well, that's the original name. And we know that the log cabin, too, comes from um, Abe Lincoln. This, this quilt block was Civil War era. Um, and so I think there's another uh, block that I had the picture of that was the American log cabin. And that was a block that actually had four small, it's four individual log cabins put together in a four patch. But I did bring a sample of a very old log cabin quilt that I wanted to share with you, Jenny. She always has the most fascinating things. Um, and this is... Um, oh, my and land. We do have a close-up picture of this, too, because what I'm... What's interesting about this is um, you'll notice that we it's open it yeah up and sure show the whole so thing? that everybody out there can see it well and the pattern it's always right fun. log cabin patterns are always fascinating to me well there's so many different that now this is here turn it sideways um, we can show it better because there's the field and furrow is this field and furrow it's not no see it's it's, it's the squares it's yeah. just um, and we'll get to showing some of those different ones. This quilt was actually um, featured in American in Patchwork and Quilting um, because of its age and... How old you, do they think it is? Um, like mid-1800s, mid to 1860s, 70s. Um, and you'll see in the slide that it was so thread-worn, um, but you'll also see it was tied um, versus quilted. Mm -hmm. And what I learned as I was doing some research was that when these blocks early on were all pieced by hand, they were pieced on a foundation. Oh, okay. And a lot of times the foundation, it got too thick for people to quilt in a traditional way, mm -hmm. so they tied these. Oh, that's interesting, so, yeah. So you'll that see, makes sense. yeah. But even, I think there's even like I do ribbons like, in here and stuff. I silks. do feel like maybe crazy people did this. <laughs> it's well, so tiny, yes. it's so tiny. Yeah. Not the crazy quilt, no. the log cabin, but I, well, you can see yeah, just. Yeah, there is, there's ribbons in here. There's, this looks like little silks maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obviously it's clothing pieces, but. Right, and you've got Holy your lights moly. and your darks. And the velvet, okay, here's another interesting fact. This has a little velvet um, center, center yeah. that's red. But I did read that in, I think, about like 1868, there was an article that talked about using black as the center to make your log cabin block. Oh, wow. Um, so before pretty... red, it was, well, and when they didn't have as many beautiful colored fabrics to work with, right. it was, you know, they were using. But there are a lot of colors in here. There are, like this orange, you know. Yeah. That's where I think it, those are probably ribbons versus yeah. maybe apparel. So, so, so this there is, are people who love tiny. They're a breed unto themselves. Cherry is a tiny lover. She will probably want to go home and make a tiny, tiny log cabin. But uh, yeah, I am, I am mostly okay with tiny, but not on a regular basis. You know, it's something that I would have to really think about and work on. Well, the versus... time. <laughs> and when it's tiny, you don't have that instant gratification you have when you use well, you that's know, true. Pre-cuts and that's in true. a few hours you There's have a, a nice reason quilt this top. isn't a king size, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, it hung over my fireplace, it's or at my gorgeous, family's Amy, fireplace. I'll Thank hold you. it for you so you okay. can move on. All right, so moving on, we could talk about um, this quilt, which is another example of an older 
log cabin. And this one is probably 18, late 1800s. Again, the, the colors are more drab, so we know that it was probably made from garments. Yeah. Um, but this pattern, I learned, is called barn raising. It's, or it's the way you set the blocks. So setting, there's so many different ways to set log cabins, and that's what's so wonderful about this quilt block. Um, do you, do you, is that what you'd call this, the way this one's set, Jenny? Yeah. Um, so again, when I made my log cabin, I had no idea books had been written about it. I thought I was inventing a new pattern every time I turned the blocks. I thought, right. oh my gosh, I was so surprised that when fields and furrowed showed right. up and the barn raising. And I think my first quilt is in the barn raising pattern. Okay. But I didn't know there were like whole right. books written about it. But it's, it's just such a fun block. Well, and this is actually a quilt I brought very recently and a friend of mine, Carol Spinsky, had it in her antique booth That's and I was so excited. I think it's going to be stretched on the wall in our a little library room in our home oh, one of these days. Um, and another, just talking more about like where I find the history and the information to when I research. When I wrote Vintage Notions, I went in deep into looking into like vintage publications. Mm -hmm. And I brought this one just because it shows, you know, uh, prize winning patchwork. And these were actually like pillow ideas. Um, but again, there's just really interesting information that about the log cabin. Uh, for instance, this one says, that um, one of the big advantages of this design is that very small scraps may be utilized for making it. So again, that's early on in- Very small scraps. <laughs> <laughs> you got it there. Um, and this was kind of fun. I don't know if we'll be able to see this with the reflection. I couldn't get it out of this. But this was called, this is an an another one of my vintage publications and I love it. A Pioneer Art Modernized. So. <laughs> You know, here we are talking about, and of course they always refer to the log cabin, like in these publications that are 1940s, as my great grandmother's quilt block that she was making. Yeah. But this is a Kentucky, wow. I didn't know if you'd ever seen a Kentucky a log cabin. I haven't. But it has little pieces too. Wow, look at that. Um, I think there's a question for us. Oh, So good. we do have a question online, Amy. This is from Jan. She wants to know what first inspired you to write the Vintage Notions book? Oh my goodness, that's a, um, I found one newsletter that was called Inspiration and Mary Brooks, that is a good segue to talking about Mary Brooks Pickin who really inspired me with her writing. So I found a newsletter. What tell a year. Uh, 1916 was mm -hmm. when the school was, she founded a school called the Women's Institute of Domestic Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. And I had been look. I love collecting vintage art. Mm -hmm. I love illustrations. I love graphics, books. Um, anything old. Anything old with cool design. Um, so I found this inspiration newsletter and I read an essay by Mary Brooks Picken and it really spoke to me because it was so relevant. It was like, these, these are the problems we're still dealing with today. It's true. That they were 100 years ago. Yeah. Um, so when I found that newsletter and read that story, I continued to collect these inspiration newsletters for their artwork as well as, you know, I just loved reading them. And that really inspired the me. The book pretty much became a compilation. Yeah, right. Of the that. kind of the best lessons and stories and testimonials. Oh, and Mary Brooks Pickett so did great. write the Singer Sewing book. So she She's, really impacted... Yeah. Have you guys read that little forward in the sing Singer Sewing Book? It's like, make Amy? sure that your hair is neatly done. Make sure that dinner is yes. made and you can sit at the table and, and, not, and not feel worried about dinner. You know, it goes through this whole thing. Dalton has another question. And that's Mary Brooks Pickens' yeah. essay from that book. So we have a question from Brenda. Speaking of historical fabrics, do you have a favorite design that you've seen using feed sack fabrics? Well, oh, feed sacks is a whole different era. This is way yes. before feed sacks. But that is a great, mm -hmm. um, and there's a feed sack quilt block right there if you want to grab it. This one? Yep. So just for fun, here's what. So the feed sacks 
obviously were later, the 1930s, and that's when you, you'll find more log cabins with color. Um, but I love all, I, I'm a feed sack yes. addict, you know. So we found, when we moved into this old barn um, out uh, in, you know, Gold Farm Road, we call it the Gold Farm House, um, there was a barrel that was upstairs in one of the barns, a metal barrel. We took the lid off and it was full of these feed sacks called hog chow, Karina hog chow feed sacks. <laughs> and I went online and looked to see what they were worth and we needed money at the time. And so I'm like, let's just sell these. They were like $15 a piece at the time. This was probably in 95. And uh, so $15 a piece. So Nat, we had them out at the, in our yard sale. Natalie sold the entire stack for $15. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oops. And we're just like, I'm just like, well, I bet that lady's really, really oh, happy. Oh, my gosh. But you guys, if you ever wonder if you're a decent quilter, look at old blocks. Because we revere them. These are our most prized treasures. And they're not straight. And they don't hang perfect. Mm -mm. And the squares aren't cut perfectly. And, you know, but we revere them. And when Moda did a big display of old antique quilts, I walked along that display, and I just like elbowed Ron, and I'm like, I'm a pretty dang good quilter, you know, because <laughs> the, the borders, you know. Yep. The, I mean, look at look at this look at this little block. I mean, it's right. The, you know, none of it's laid in here straight, and yet we love it. I we, love the wonkiness of that, and we love the maker. You know? My favorite makers are the ones that sew two seams to make one piece. Oh. You know, I love those. I found that on one of these thrifty, blocks, and you know she's a thrifty you. maker. Yep. You know, I love yep. that. This Ma is so cool. Mend and make do. Every little scrap yeah, was do. used. That's right. So there you have the feed sack. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk again more about feed sacks here in a in a bit too. Um, I did another block or another way the blocks are set that I wanted to share mm -hmm. is we can look back here, Jenny. Um, this is a traditional you know, light and dark. Mm -hmm. um, and some people say this is like, um, you know, the, the sun shining on one side of the log cabin and dawn and dusk. Oh, I love all those um, stories. Yeah, and then this is the one that's, isn't that field and furrow? Yeah. Because it's Where the it diagonalized. Like yeah. yeah. Down yep. the side. And um, so the other log cabin that we, and I've incorporated a lot of what I like to do is then incorporate vintage patchwork I find into various projects. Um, and isn't the, well, and let me say well, one quick no thing. it has no batting. This must be a summer quilt because mm -hmm. it has no batting in it at all. Yep, you're right, mm -hmm. I didn't even. And these would be those indigos and then the shirting. Mm -hmm. And I do, I just think it's a beautiful piece. It's it's, it's borrowed from my mom, thanks mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do so have a question this, from the live audience if you could, Amy. Sure. sure. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I'm from College Station, Texas. My question is about, you were talking about the catalog of um, quilt blocks. Is that featured in your book, or where can we get that catalog? Well, it's actually featured in another book of mine. I did this uh, quilt therapy coloring book. And in so the, where I got all of the patterns that we then configured into... Uh, the coloring book and the story of the ladies art company is in the beginning of the book um, I tell the story they not only that ladies art company existed for many years and they not only did quilt block patterns but they also did embroidery patterns they did uh, some amazing things so that is one place that you can find I have thought of republishing that collection um, and I use it a lot for product development with, yeah. um, you know, just So look, I would, I'm just going to show you a, like a page in this book because um, they have all these things. So I, this is, I will look through these and go, you know, my magic isn't, you know, coming up with a block. It's, it's, it's how to make things easier. Yeah. And so I will look through this and go, oh my gosh, I how could do this with a, with a layer cake, you know. And so it becomes a... It a great something. resource. It's a, yeah, it's a great resource. Well, and remind too. I think a I might have one. A of lot. These. Well, I have three of them if you need an extra. <laughs> um, in, in 1922, 1928, and Barbara Brackman's book. You know, some of the information probably in her encyclopedia and Jenny Byer, Jenny Byer's encyclopedia. Those are great resources for. Mm -hmm. And I, you guys sell the 
Harbor's book, possibly. Or oh, maybe. I'm sure we do. I'm um, sure we do. I use that a lot for inspiration. You know, I'll, I'll be like, oh, snap, yeah. I can make that. Well, <laughs> she's right down the road in Lawrence. Yeah. Um, yeah, she is. So what else, Jenny? What, what Do you, you want to look this? at this? Let's you want to talk about what well, we can make with this? Well, this is a variation on the log cabin. It is. And you can see here, it's it, there's no red center. It's, mm -hmm. it's four different fabrics. But you can see the way it's different from, you know, and these are very, um, you know, mixed versus lights and darks being very specific. This one below here has more prints, too. And those are... Let me hold this up so you yeah. guys can see it. Because this is a gorgeous piece as well. Um, and those are those, the browns, calicos. And those I are like late 1870s, 80s, 90s. You know what I um, love is that... Um, a lot of fabric designers actually buy old qu quilts and they're colorists. They don't design new fabric. They use the old fabric and put a different color on Right. It. And so, because once you own this fabric, it can be yours to put a color on. And so all of this fabric is readily available newish. You know, it's, good, right. it's not maybe not exact, but closish. That's why we have the mercantile over here because this kind of stuff you right. can find in there. Right. And it's just gorgeous. I love the mercantile. Here, let, let me in fact, show you. that's where my Vintage Notions book is if anybody wants the Vintage Notions so, book. So this is, <laughs> as I open this up, you'll see the fields and furrows. Right. Isn't that fun? So, Amy, you might. I just love learning the history. You might point out the row, Amy, where it goes down. Yeah, here's the dark and then the light. So you can see that is what refers to the field, field, fields and furrows. And, and it's just how you turn the block. It's the same right. block, it's just how you turn it. Well, and this is a great example of the sunshine and shadow setting. I love the border on that. When, well, when we were talking about the color. Um, Hang on just a sec, let me get this. We're having so much fun with our log cabins, aren't we? And while we're getting these uh, yes. folded up and put away, we've had a couple people ask where they can find the Vintage Notions book, and that is absolutely available online, MissouriStarQuiltCo.com. Right, online and at the Mercantile. And yep. at Mercantile. And we will be giving away a couple of those today for oh, our live right. audience online. Yay. Yes. So if you are Yay. joining online, make sure you sign up for that giveaway, and we'll announce our winners at the end of the show. Where right, they, and some patterns, too. It is online. The links are in the description. Okay, so if you girls want to sign up, you quilters want to sign up, you have to go on to the feed where it's happening and sign up on there. All right. I might have one extra Vintage Notions book I could give away here, Just too. Just one. Just one. Okay, this so border. this is such this a cool border. I know, isn't it? Just and I unexpected. Don't feel like, I don't feel, yeah, it's totally unexpected because I don't feel like it really goes with the quilt, no. but it's probably what she had. Right. But again, you can see in, in this example where the lights halves were all brought together, and this is supposed to be the sun, and shadow is the dark. So that's just another wow. way to set your log cabins. And again, this is my mother's quilt. Thanks, Mom. Here, I'll fold that for you. Okay. I got the long arms. All right. The Thank long you, quilting Jenny. folding arms. Well, we can, let's see, I'm just making sure I've covered things. I would like to now maybe talk about the patterns in different ways that I use vintage patchwork that I find, whether it be a block or a quilt top, and we make things um, and bring them into our modern life so we can enjoy them. And one of the patterns that I've done, and it, I have an example with the log cabin, is this little fold and go folio. Uh, and here's that pattern. The, here's the oh, pattern. Here's the pattern. Okay. Yep. And here's your template too, Jenny. So the the nice thing is that Missouri Star has a template that matches up to the large and yeah. the... Yeah, so there's a drawing in here, so you don't need the template, but if you want the template, but which it's the large octagon. Right, and I'm going to explain why we like working with the template, mm -hmm. too. Um, but what I will say is that we do have a slide that shows this, um, how we fussy cut using the template with this flying geese print. So I have to say, this feels so brave to me. This? Cutting up a, 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 an yes. old quilt. Well, it feels hugely brave. Like, you know, you're, there's, a, there's a controversy in the industry, but here's my feeling on that. 
if the quilt is in such poor shape that it's headed to a landfill, yep. then use right. it. Use right. as much of it as you can. Right. And so there's people who are making quilt coats and things like that. And I love the idea that at least it's become a useful mm -hmm. article rather than heading to a landfill right. or something. But you, have, you haven't even opened your fold and go. Is oh, it, okay. Is it time? Yes, it's time. It's so, time. So these are... <laughs> Jenny's going to keep me on Here's track. Why these are so cool to me, though. It's like a little sewing kit. Look it. And, and it's got this little, um, this, you, I mean, it's you can. It's a drawstring bag. 100%, you can customize these and right. make them any way you want. And we have the larger and the smaller. You right. can open yours. Okay, so, and there's two versions. There's sewing and jewelry. This so is, here's sewing. You can see where you can put like your for spools. The, for the small sewer, for the big sewer. Right, right. You know? <laughs> for the tiny projects, for, for the, the tiny, big projects. For the big, yeah. You can put your you know, tape measure in here. You could put even, you can even fit a needle threader in there. Yeah. Um, so that's a well, sewing. Well, and you can make the pockets any size you want. Obviously. Correct, you know, right. So if there's things right. that you love to sew with, right. then you can attach them to. Like I have a tiny little pillow that's a pin cushion and you could just sew the edge of that in here and it would be there. Oh yeah, you know? that's a great idea. We haven't actually put a pin cushion. We scissors. can get together and come up with lots of fun ideas. These scissors, I believe I bought here, actually. Who doesn't love the little crane scissors, and, the vintage? And let me just say, when I did my scissors, I put my pocket the this other way. way. Okay. And every time oh, I opened it, it fell out. Yes. If it, but it fell out. So then I was like, oh, sideways. Be careful. Sideways yes. is a good idea. Because I would be like, where did my scissors go? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that she was brave enough to use... Well, this was a block, right? I know, right? So this was the block. Because we this get is, these at, at antique stores. We'll buy know? a block of some, you know, or a stack of little blocks or something like that. This, I, I found a stack of like a hundred of these. Um, so that was a find when I found those. And then let me show the jewelry. Antique stores. Yeah, we could go antiquing later. Oh my gosh. <laughs> If you've, never been to the can, if you've never been to the bottoms. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And then this is the jewelry version. So you can see how you could put your bracelets in the big pocket. And I love the idea that the needle keep, can hang, you can hang your earrings on that. So, and put your rings. Oh, there's so many things you can do. Yes. And then, yes. And then all the fabrics. Look at all the, look at all the different yes. colors. These, well, and I brought these because these, Jenny, are a good example of why it's great to have the template to fussy cut. So if you want to get ah. Tula's, you know, beautiful fabric. Or just, the bird. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. This is Moon Garden, her new line. And then you can see, too, that one I think is kind of a nice example. Look at this little block on here. And again... This time I put two felt pieces, so you you know there's no limits again, like you said, to how you can customize it for your own. And we even put like think about technology and um, earbuds, jump drives, oh, right. make it out of a man's tie, all you, all and your it could, cords. Yes, exactly, all those. And she has a snap. You could do Velcro. You right. could make the put a buttonhole. You could do. There's so many things Loop. you could do to close this. Yeah. I do love buttons, and so it's a fun way to showcase one of your favorite buttons. And, and if you uh, are interested in the Fold and Go Folio, we do have the link to that in the description. Oh. But okay. this time last year for National Quilting Month, Jenny actually filmed a tutorial on that I from did. the main shop right. as well. Yeah, so there's actually a tutorial on how to make the Fold and Go Folio. And, and so. Wonderful. So, and it's easy to make. It's a great gift for people. Now, talk, let's talk about this cutting. Well, tell I where it went. You. Okay. <laughs> so... When I was a child, okay, so this is a quilt top, everybody. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a finished quilt, and it hung. I have been around quilts since I was since birth. Um, my Bless family, your yeah, my great, everybody collected in my family. So this actually hung, was stretched on a wall in my home growing up in Des Moines. I grew and when up in, you say stretched, what do you mean? Uh, on bars, just a wooden frame. It was stretched. So it looked like a piece of art hanging oh, on the wall. interesting. I've never thought about doing that. So when we moved and my mom took down the piece, she attached the, the top from the frame and, you know, and it, just brought it, yeah. brought it. And so that's, that's why it wasn't actually ever made into a quilt. Yeah. So, and it wasn't, per, you know, it was one of those that but again, I'll tell you, um, in fact, if you want to, Brian, put up the slide of 
uh, my mom and I wearing quilt coats. Uh, so Amy when I was growing up, five. <laughs> when I'm five wearing a quilt coat in this, in this How picture. How old are you? How old am I now? In, no, in the, in the picture. <laughs> no, we don't I'm care. Like, <laughs> we don't care about that. How old are you? I was like five? probably five to eight years old wearing a quilt coat. It's yeah. red and white, and my mom has on one too. Uh -huh. Because when I was in so darling. that age, my mom and her friend had a business called Bertha's Bed, and they would find cutter quilts. And so, you know, uh -huh. what's old is new again. Quilt coats are back, but this is an example of that picture is one. So, um, and that can bring us to talking about making the anytime topper, uh, because on that slide is a picture of my mom wearing this anytime topper we have back here. Oh, okay. Which is they made in the log cabin. So this is the pattern, and and it's basically two big strips of fabric. You know, it's very well, simple. Well, it is very, very simple. That's what it, everybody loves about it. It's really, you know, rectangles that are then, you have a pleat here at your shoulder. Uh, and this and one. A, a seam here. Right. This one is cropped because I only had, I bought this really cool, I felt this had a really great modern look to mm -hmm. it when I bought this awesome, piece. Yeah. And it was just, I think, eight. Blocks. And again, this is a log cabin, um, but just a very different look, all shirting, I believe. But so we decided, let's try the Anytime Topper yeah. using this block. And we actually upcycled. So those shirts right there, Jenny, are what the fabric that we use to make the uh, rest of the top. So that's the other half here. It looks very normal. And yeah. then... <laughs> Whoops! That guy's <laughs> Don't gonna be let a little. Don't wear that one. That guy's gonna be a little cold. <laughs> Here we go. And then the other for the back though, we did have to. I'll just switch this around so you see it. For the back, we did have to add a panel on each side to get the width we needed. So the, this was a chambray shirt. Yeah. So Amy's actually wearing it anytime yes. as well. And this is the actual length of the short version. So this is very cropped when we just wanted to use two blocks. Um, but again, so it was fun to be able to incorporate um, that log cabin. And then I, I can switch over and can I, show. Can I ask you first, sure. before we go further? Yes. Where would you put this to, to make the pattern show up? Like that? Yeah, how would you well, do that? Well, this is the top, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were doing this one, we would want to reverse that and have it, um, you know. Because I'm so angrily challenged, this is why I'm asking you. I'm, I'm, right. I'm like, well, but, 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 wait, 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 you know. Okay, so this is the, this is the, about where it would be, okay. right? To get this one. See this? Oh, okay. So see here, the border? Yes. See the border okay. right here at the yes. top, and this is at the top? Okay. Does that? That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So that's I just, the beauty you know, of. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could also cut your own, like, window, too. Sure. But I, anyway, and with this pattern, you actually trace around, this line is the sewing line. Right. So you trace and then add your, yeah, your here, additional. I will fold this for you. Seam allowance, thank you. And just side note too, I like gingham with, a lot of times quilt blocks, vintage look great with gingham. So this gingham was actually a man's dress shirt from Savers. So think about when you're shopping. Now I will say there are some Yarn, and the reason I like the shirts um, is because they're yarn dyed. A lot of ginghams today that we get that manufacturers are making are printed gingham, which is nothing wrong with that, especially for this project. Right. But the yarn dyes are the um, she's a purist. My favorites. <laughs> um, so before we, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, well, in this Jenny is another version of the Anytime Topper with a, a quilt top that we had and. I have a picture of it being modeled that you'll see, and in that picture you can see the back of the um, the back of the this sure. version we did fully quilted. Where this one we use chambray on the back. Can so we can we sure. turn her? Yeah. Yep. 
And there Amy, I do have a question from Allison online. Uh, she mm-hmm. would like to know what is the best way to line the interior of the Anytime Topper if they choose to do that? That is a good question. So I can answer that because uh, I'm a clothing sewer. You would basically make two and you would sew them together. You would just lay them on there and Sandwich sew them together them. and flip it just like you would do a, a pillowcase right. or a block. It would just be a, leave an opening. And, and then, then flip, flip it. it. Yeah, that's what I would do. Because this is a very simple It is very, very simple. simple. Piece. And I will tell you the simplicity, the, another thinking of lining it, you know, like a real handkerchief weight mm-hmm. could be a nice lining. We've tried that with one. Um, also, the way it's designed, these pleats that happen up here at the shoulder, whether you're tiny or you have a wider, broader, um, shoulders. It's really amazing. The the smaller size in that pattern fits just about everybody yeah. because this is very flattering. Mm-hmm. And we have also, we've even made this out of polar fleece. So I've worn it to a football game. Oh wow! Out of Chiefs polar fleece. Wow! But <laughs> of course the Chiefs. <laughs> um, and the Jayhawks too, but <laughs> anyway. But you do need to see, I do find you can sew down the seam oh, just yeah. a few inches. Especially if it, it's heavier fabric. Right, exactly. Okay. That so sense. that's just a little tip. And that this, Jenny, was, um, again, we found a shirt. I was gonna say, it looks like man's suiting. Yeah it, yeah, it looks like that, but it's actually, you can see there's a little stitching here, very faint. It was actually a shirt, uh, like a, a chambray, you know, denim kind of smoky gray. And then we seamed, this time we didn't have enough, so we decided to put a seam right here. Mary did this and did such a nice job, and she matched it up kind of toward the quilt block where it was, so I think it gives it a nice nice finish. Um, And how about some other ideas for quilt blocks? Look at this one we did that is just using it as a pocket on a bag. So there you can just- Really simple. Yeah, just, and again, we just, you know, added a lining. And this is another tip that I like to um, share is when we find, look for denim, oh, there it is, to go to <laughs> coordinate sometimes with our vintage blocks and things, I always, this was actually made from a jumper. So this is what's left. I was left. just going to say, if I'd known, I would have saved all my jumpers. Yes, remember? I was the denim jumper queen. Well, they were very popular in their day, and I had a few they myself. Um, but we ended up using the wrong side of the denim instead of the right side. Oh, interesting, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So just keep that in mind when you're looking well, at... Well, and I do like things that say I'm a quilter without screaming I'm a quilter, mm-hmm. you know? That right. It's just like you have this little bit of, you know, anybody, anybody you know, who's a quilter would know, but it wouldn't, you're not like walking around in the, in in the, the king full size. length. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, there's one little, see that? piece there yes that is a vest so this vest is another log cabin My um goodness, I love and again this, this is a look this is kind of in between mm-hmm. you know um but this I love just this I don't this was in a collection that um Again, I think it was and, from and my mom's store. And this is the same store. way you would line that other one. It's the exact same pattern piece. You just sew all right. the way around it and leave a little hole. And your hole can be here on the inside of this seam, or it can be in the bottom. This is top stitched all, all the, way the way around, around. so it doesn't matter where the hole is. But don't put it on a curve. You know, put right. it, put it, like Hide it in someplace. the back. You know, so that it's a it's a straight piece. And look I'm going to have to go blocks. look through my tops. I have a bin of, and you know, see what you can. Am I the only quilt rescuer here? The only one? <laughs> I think there's a few other quilt yes. rescuers. We, we see them and we're like, <gasps> well, and so I have a bin and I get them generally if I'm gonna do an idea with them, but I would love to make a coat. Well, I saw Teresa Coates wearing that coat I on know. the live the other day. That, she thought. obviously, I think she made that the quilt for the coat, though. I think I think you're right. I do think that is sometimes the way it has to to work. Oh, these are darling. This is just two little nine patches. Yep, just zipped a little zipper pouch, and that's just this a little crossbody so bag. <laughs> and she's, you know, this is this is another thing too. We all own machines that can sing and dance and stand on one leg, Oops. but we use two stitches. <laughs> you know, and this is a great place to use all your fancy because it almost looks like crazy quilt stitching. Doesn't it? No, no. That, that yeah. looks like kind of the feathers. Yes, I call it the um, turkey foot or something. 
<laughs> and I loved all the fabrics. I make in up that, all the names, including that red. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these you know, and the patterns. I've had a great time. Well, you know, I had been in the pattern business a long time with Indigo Junction, mm -hmm. and now I'm doing them look under at, my own. Oh, at, there it is, where somebody patched it together. Can you see this right here, where there's a little seam so, to make the thing? It's like, you didn't give me enough fabric. I'm like, sew some of those little scraps together. And just do we ever do that today? Not I very. do. I well, do it all the go. time. Yeah, no, I do it all the time. Every little scrap. Every little scrap. So when people buy the pattern, they do get a QR code that actually takes you to a lookbook and some videos um, that give you more ideas and in-depth. And the patterns have lots of nice pictures. You can see we've made this with bandanas. You can upcycle. Well, I think Misty did a video on it too, didn't she? Oh, you? yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Misty and I did the video together. Yeah. And are, these, are these some more to show over here? Well, I brought those, yes, if we want we, to, if we, we have time. We Do we have time? Okay. We, so we can just, we can just like walk across okay. one at a time. So this is Kaif Facet. And I, we just added a little uh, placket there. <laughs> <laughs> here I go. <laughs> Walk, look at this with the, the indigo fabric. Isn't that gorgeous? That's Debbie Maddie's fabric from Moda. Now, honestly, this is a great pattern. If you don't like wearing quilters jewelry, which is what we call threads, <laughs> quilters glitter, which is what we call threads, this can protect you, give you some clothing protection. Aren't they fun? Well, there is a challenge happening right now, Color Me Cave Challenge, and you're supposed to use three fabrics. So this is inspiration for oh, just how you can combine. I, this makes me want to go on spring break, but it was last week. And, it's beautiful. Um, and these are the shot cottons, and you carry. Mm -hmm. We have a, your store, the yeah. florals, has just a tremendous selection. It's such a popular line. And then wait. Oh. Wait, I might no. need to hang on. OK. Hang Here on we go. Because I might need to do this. Okay. This is exciting. Wait a minute. Now, I, this morning I had a short sleeve, so I luckily had this in the car. Um, and Jenny, be careful you don't stick yourself with pins. I'll tell you about it. We were, we were testing a hood, adding a hood to the Anytime Topper. Doesn't she look good? <laughs> yes. I feel like. There you go. I feel like Lion Woman. There you go. I and like show, it. So this, there's, well, pin, there's pins in the hood, but, but look yeah. how cool that hood would be. Well, because I was coming to talk to Misty about maybe. We just need maybe, some long gloves. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, about this pattern, and maybe we'll do something with teaching everybody how to add a hood someday to the Anytime Topper. So we are, uh, we are the world's sale? largest carrier of cuddle now yeah. because um, Fabric.com went out, and so they needed somebody to step up and take that on, and so we did, and so all things cuddle. Mm. So I want to open a shop that's, one of our stores that's all the soft things, like oh, all the yes. soft fabrics, all the flannels. Yes. I want to call it the padded cell. <laughs> <laughs> the kids aren't going for that idea. I'll be, I like that, I like that. But it, You're insanely soft. Insanely soft. That's the way so I soft. feel about the cuddle fabric. Oh my gosh, That yes. Lux Cuddle, we have had so much fun. We, well, in the Wherever Wrap, which is another one of my new patterns that's part of the giveaway, um, that we've done in pink cuddle. We've done it in red for the holidays. It's I back a lot you know, of quilts in it. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. It's great. So, and, I, and actually, those two-yard cuts that you sell oh, work more. perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Here's, here's Thanks, two more Jenny. of these, too. You're not, not missing a beat for me. Um, again, these are, this is cropping it shorter. Um, and and it, this has, oh, this is printed on, that's yes. cool. So the um, Cantha quilts have mm -hmm. the are the big stitch quilts. You know, they have the big running stitches and they're actually selling some of those over at the museum right oh, now. Oh, really? But this is a print that makes it look like mm -hmm. Cantha. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they're, they're, it's just darling. This is a great print. This is again Debbie Maddie's, and it's a little heavier. She has a linen weight too. Mm -hmm. The thing I'll tell you too, you have to be careful because you do, unless you yes. line it like we yeah. talked about, you do see, you see the, the underside. Side. That's why I lean towards yarn dyed fabric. And this is a shot cotton, and right. so it looks the same either way. Right. And that I wanted to share a modern looking version. Yeah, of, this is this is uh, quilted. Yeah. This is actually pieced. Yes. 
Yeah, so Very Mary nice. did that. She did a beautiful job with it. So we're, we're thinking always of ways we can incorporate the, our love of quilting in everyday life. A uh, question and, for you from Twyla, if you could, Amy. Uh, if these jackets are lined, could they be reversible? Oh, yes. Yes. Especially. Yeah. That's, especially if you do the sew around method. We, in Ooh. fact, they're, they're, Whole new we thought. have looked at putting together a, a tutorial explaining how to do that and giving people. So that's the one thing about these patterns that have the QR code. You can sign up, you can kind of register as an owner of the pattern. And then if we have updates and we've, find new fabrics or new ideas or new Which, techniques. if you know Amy at all, we are, we are going to have lunch together after this and we will come up with 8,000 new ideas in 30 yes. minutes time. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, and speaking of ideas, well, or, oh, there, it happened. Look what happened. Good thing I didn't stab you, Jenny. Look what I, what if, I'm glad I didn't get, Oh my goodness. That so could have been a, oh, that could have been a really function. A problem. So you when I came to visit Let me. We are the show. We are the It's all right. Okay. So I don't know that this is going to be the best advertising that since everything's falling out of the folio, but um, this is the the So this was a dresser scarf. Right. And Amy was showing me these last month and I'm like do you have another piece of that? I just think it's so beautiful. And my grandmother's art was embroidery. She yeah. embroidered lots of little flowers and stuff like that. And I just thought it was so beautiful. And so Amy's like, well, let me see. I did have another piece. <gasps> because, you know, most of those dresser scarves have ways. the embroidery on both ends. So look for those at it. Yes, sale. those are, you can find them for 5 <gasps> and $6. Oh, my gosh, you guys, so look at these little, they look like little tiny pillows. There's your little pockets. And, and Maybe I, we'll have to tie in your scissors just yeah. to be, but there's your pockets. To be you safe. can put your, that seam ripper is a, a longer seam ripper, but it seemed to fit. Or I like making this open on one end and it can be just a sleeve that you could slide even like your erasable, your water erasable marker. So I do believe you brought me this. Yes, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I love this. And did your mom make this? Yes. So she a big has... thank you to Donna Martin, who is, and Mary Meyer, who work with me developing all these projects, and we just have so a good time together. So I am together. the mom who sews. I don't have a mom who sews. My mother never mm. sewed. And, um, but your grandma did. No, well, oh. my grandmother only embroidered. Oh, okay. But her sisters were amazing seamstresses. My grandmother okay. was the baby. So they sewed for her. Okay, okay. They made all of her clothing, everything like that. She never learned to sew, Aww. and she had two daughters, and neither one of them learned to sew. And I got all, all the sewing jeans. So, wow. and I uh, think we're all very happy you did. <laughs> well, there's... and I'm very happy you just live up the road. I'm in right, Kansas City, right? so you know that's how I could bring all my treasures to yeah. share with everybody. Any other questions? Yeah. Do we, here's a. Do we, oh wait. Oh sure. This is. Um, and I might even have an example, a couple more examples. Well, here's, you know, for instance, these were two modern blocks. You Left can over. see, yep, how, what it would look like if, when we finish it. Um, but again, you know, you, as you look at this, this is, you know, this is the top mm -hmm. of where you're You have to remember that you're going to fold this in half. Right. So I did one, and on this side, the birds are right. On the other side, they're upside down. Yeah. Because, so, because on one side, so like this one right here, yeah. when you're fussy cutting. And so when you open this, see how the birds are upside down? But that's all right. Mm -hmm. that's it's going right. to happen. You have one. Or you could seam, you know, you could make a piece where you seamed it on the you bottom. You sure could. You sure could. That could be an option. And the pattern, you know, they're so, you'll just, so versatile. And you'll just lay this on here and decide where you want your top to be. Right. You know. And that one is, this block probably we could only do the medium. But like for instance, the, um, here it is. the And these tinies. This could be, I know, I, those were too perfect for, I mean, I literally, yeah, so can see, you believe it? I have a hundred right of those. But then again, if you're you fussy have made cutting, 100. I'm pretty sure every one of these gals would buy one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to bring party favors next time. But here you could see where the how the log cabin might be centered. Um, 
Yeah, or this one. And I think we have a question over here as well. I do. I have Billy here in the audience, and Hi, she would Billy. like to know if you could provide an extra day of the week so they have time ah. to get all these projects oh, done. Oh, we can work. It's so day. <laughs> You know, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so day. So day. Yeah. Sunday after Sunday. We've, we've right. done it. We've added it. It's kind of it. like leap year. <laughs> <laughs> I know there is not enough time in the day, but I find part of the joy of what we do sewing is just for you and I is, I think, Jenny, the collecting and the learning about mm -hmm. the stories behind 100%. the stitches, as I like to say. There's, yeah. there's so much... Um, wonderful you know oh there's just the legacy with quilting legacy is a really great word for that no. because there's just so much out there that you know we always think oh we're, th we're the first one but no 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 this oh, has been no. done you know we never claim to be the first one because you're going to find it somewhere or, yeah. yeah so it's fun to be able to share it with everybody and you know for national quilting month it's we have very fun. We a few have more so weeks left going on yeah yeah thank you now, we oh, have seen a fun. lot of love online for the Vintage Notions book, as well as these patterns. And Amy, I believe we're going to give away two prize packages right. for these, yes. correct? Yep. I do have our winner's names if you're ready for okay, it. Okay, I am ready. So Wait, in... what do they get? I'll show you. Okay. All right, she's going to show us. Front off. So. And you guys, this book is the best relaxing, sit-down reading that I've ever done. It's just, it's beautiful Aww. to look at, and you just page through, it, you, you want to be slow to turn the pages because there's something we'll interesting. Slip a little through. So the book is one prize, and it, it the neat too, Mary Brooks Pickin actually grew up in Kansas City. So I mean, there's a- all this attention to detail, it's just beautiful. Amy. Oh, thank it. you. Well, and the fashion, the there's stories. a lot of fun history and fashion in it. So the, the one of the, pro, you're going to get the book, you're going to get the fold and go folio pattern. This is the wherever wrap pattern, mm -hmm. which is great in that Lux cuddle and the anytime topper pattern. So that is the prize package today. All right. So Dalton is going to announce. All right. So our first winner, and we will reach out to you by email to get your address and get this shipped out today is Libby Clemens. Libby, congratulations. Congratulations, Libby. And our second winner today is going to be Eileen Farmer. Eileen, Eileen Farmer. Farmer. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. Excellent. That is so great. Well, well we sure enjoyed our time yes. with you, Amy, and we enjoyed our time here at Missouri Star and being able to talk oh, about yeah. vintage. The history is so important. One of the things I would say is there would be nothing better than to find that quilt and find on the back of it something that said, this was made for mm. Aunt Mary's wedding in 1923. Would that not be like right. a gift to know some of the history? So label your quilts because they will outlive you by generations. Yes. And, um, and then somebody will know it was yours. That's a great point. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, I, I do too. Well, we good? we're going to go to lunch, I guess. All right. So, well, we'll see everybody, everybody later. Happy National Quilting Month. Yes.